let's look how ineffective the church is in, in this country. That's, I would say, probably due to our, our wealth and we're sidetracked with the world. Exactly. I mean, today I'm already thinking about I got to go to work here in two hours. Not even focusing on I have to go to work in two hours. You do? Yeah. I do. Where? At the plow. You do? You mean you throw a uh, sock down? No, I have to go plow in the parking. Really? Well, Dude, the Bible says be careful for nothing. Be, yeah, be careful for nothing. But what does that mean? Don't be worried about anything. All your cares and don't. don't. So, uh, so where is, uh, uh, now I'm telling you, where did, uh, now I don't know if I heard this, from, I think I heard this from Tammy. Where are a lot of people from the big church heading right, headed out for right now? Where did they go? Oh, no, Sunday school. Physically, no, no, the big church, where did they go? Last week or two. There's a lot of No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Palm Sunday? Like they went to a Next head. They went somewhere. Some people went. Now, I, I don't know how factual. Oh, Ukraine? They went to Ukraine. Now, according to Joe's argument, where should they be going? You mean they physically went to Ukraine? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, Mid Christians are nice. Missionaries? They, they, headed, they headed into the burning towers. Yeah, they went there as, as a missionary. Well, uh, uh, Joe's argument, where should they have headed? Probably just started their own neighborhood. Well, yeah, go, go. I was kind of pointing the finger at us, not at anybody else. Well, yeah, well, that's pointing at us. So where should where should we go? Just go in your own town. Yeah, just go down, you go, go to your next door neighbor. Listen, we're getting the people's mail. We've been asked to get people's mail. It's save the chimpanzees and kill the babies. That's what the neighbors, that's what the neighbors yeah, say. Yeah, but if you think about it, the people in Ukraine have a reason to turn to the Christ now. People here have no reason, so they're more open to it. Oh, they have a reason. On some have compassion making a difference, others say, for fear, man, you're going to burn. But there's the no reason. Here, we have wealth, and there's no, there's no, people don't have a reason. They're just taking Yeah, they do have a reason. You're going to burn in hell, and that them. thing is marching all over the place. <laughs> They're content with what you're saying. They're People very, don't change without conflict. Yeah. There's no reason to it because what you're saying, right? Everybody's, everybody, in, in, in the reality is most Americans are rich compared to people in the It's true. But they don't think they're rich. No, I know. Well, but according to Tammy, you know, I don't know what's online. When she saw that, there are people there had no went there. They got their plane ticket and went. Now, I don't know how true that is, or maybe I misunderstood it. And I'm thinking, why would they head in there? They can't even, first of all, they can't speak the, the language. Well, By the way, when you see the news, do you see anything that a little odd when, they, uh, when they're talking to, to these people? What, obviously, they're looking for certain people. The bulk of the people they find, what language do they speak? Yeah. No? Yeah. Not Ukrainian either. English. They speak English. I can't speak anything other than English. It, it gives me, I'll have that in the sermon today. It gives me a, maybe a new meaning to the ending of tongues. Now, I, I, we know what tongues are for. We're not, we're not going to create some new doctrine. I think the Russian thing is it's just my hair and I The world is going to be a one world government. And I think it's, it's Russia saying, I think it's Putin saying, no, I'm not being a part of that. And they're like, yes, you are. And they're kicking and well, that's what the That's what the theory is. Like the conspiracy is, is that we're not going to be part of that. And that, and that he supposedly is a good guy, not a bad guy. I don't know. Well, he's not a good guy, that's for sure. He does seem to be a good guy to me. A good guy? Well, no, there's, we got people, we got people that claim he's good. He's, he's a bad dude. He's a lesser to you. He's the KJB. Who knows, who knows what's, well, who knows, who knows yeah, what's who behind knows. it all. Well, no. See, but, but that's not my job. My job is not to do that. So my job is to preach what it says here. That's what we're going to do. So what does it say here? 
Whatever's saying on the internet, that's not my job. That's not my job. God's got, God's got already all the answers and everything we need to know. Acts 2, where are we? Acts 2. Uh, we're we're going to address this thing of yours. And, and I'm not telling you we're going to have a conclusion. Acts chapter 2. Go to the end. Verse 45. And sold their possessions and goods. They did that. Uh, now what does that sound like? And they pardoned them to every man as he had need. What does that sound like? What's a, a form of government? Socialism. All right. Now, Bruce. Now we're not going to. We're going to get to the communion part. That's communism in your mind. But is that communism? All charity. Well, it's got to be well willing. Yeah. On, that's on the one. Exactly. Is is Bruce Musselman explained government in a nutshell? Is this is how Americans think? What's mine is mine. What's mine is mine. That's how an American thinks. How does a Russian think? And not a Russian, because we've known Russians. I, I've been talking about a communist, the one that's in charge, yeah, the AOCs. What's yours is mine. That's how they think. There's always this elite at the top. Everybody else is our paupers. And that's the bulk of the world. Even if, even in England, there was the manor house, and he rented the land, you were serfs. And then, but, but Christianity is what's mine is yours, or everything's God's. That's what I tell the kids. It's not, which I agree, that's how they look at it, but it should be the Christian. I told them this yesterday. But what's yours should be God's. But should... Bruce Musselman explained it. And I said, man, that, that is it in a nutshell. American, American is this. What's mine is mine. Communism is what's yours is mine. And Christianity is what's mine is yours. If you start thinking about it, man, there's few, very few people that think like that. All right, now the next verse. Verse 46. We're going to get to your question. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, and did eat their meat with gladness, singleness of heart. They eat their meat. Now what's the breaking of bread? What is that? Now I didn't now I don't have commentaries opening up and getting the dope on that. I have them. I mean I don't have the answers right now. I mean, I, I can't remember everything. What does that mean? Is it is it mean we got one big fellowship meal going on? Now people get like that where they what what kind of a church is this? There's no building. There are no pews. There's no padded chairs. They go from house to house. What kind of what kind of part? Home church. Home church. Where does that end up? And they have a different meal. It's all centered around dinner. And then who gets to do the teaching? No. Supposedly, it's going to be the husband of the house. I'll tell you where that ends up. It ends up in a big fight. We've had people where, man, they're going to kill each other. Literally kill each other. One guy told me, he said, it was a good friend of mine. He said, if there was a gun in the room, we would have killed each other. There would have been a death. The trigger would have been pulled. It ends up in, in witchcraft. you got a, a witch running it, and she runs the whole covey. Where it always ends up, man. De demonic. You're demonic. So is the breaking of bread, is that communion? And then they're eating their meat. But it ends up in a home church. So I had other people who said, well, we're not coming to Sunday school. So they do their own Sunday school. You know when they when 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 push comes to shove and then they have to prepare their own lessons, how long does that last? Anybody know how long that lasts? Two weeks, three weeks, a month or two, last one or two months, it's over. You want to know why? It's work. It's a lot of work. All right. Uh, oh, and by the way, the Lord added to the church. 
It's not bothering me. Repeat after me, folks. I'm not saying people shouldn't pray and be saved. We, we, we promote that. But man, a lot of this stuff, and by the way, that stuff when they hit the altar and they're coming forward, and we, we've been in the back. We've been in the school and in the class. That's all pre-planned. You think this is a lot of spontaneity, a lot of that stuff is all pre-planned. It's already it's already set. They're they're coming forward. They're going to escort them forward. And a lot of that's all pre-planned. By the way, uh, the Billy Graham business, all that stuff is pre-planned. You know, when they start playing the music, the violins are playing. Everybody's starting to cry. Who's coming forward at those rallies? Anybody know what comes forward? We we get the dope on this stuff. Who's coming forward? By the way, they had Johnny Cash singing for the guy. He ended up having a relapse back in the hospital. They had, uh, I don't know, ACDC, some of these groups playing for him. Who's coming? Anybody know who's coming forward? Actors. Huh? Actors. Yeah, who are the actors? Sad numbers. They're the, 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 the infection. Those that are working the altar are the ones coming forward. If you're sitting there and you feel like you're coming forward, the, 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 it gives the impression, oh, people are coming forward and just saying, nah, the workers are coming forward. Then, the, then you come forward, then you bow the knee, you repeat the prayer, and you can say, I'm not saying they didn't get saved. They tell that people to stay in the church that they're at. And they should be telling them to get out of there. Anyway, we know what goes on in those things because we've had people who were directly involved with all that. Billy Graham was a Jesuit. It, it, it's a mess. The whole thing is a mess. And by the way, it points to the end times when the, the mustard seed is planted, it grows into this enormous tree, and then what fills the tree? Bows. A bunch of dirty birds. The church is filled with it. I was going to have that in a sermon someplace. The church is just filled with that stuff. It is filled with dirty birds. All right, back here now. We don't know what the breaking of bread is. I don't know what it is. Is that communion? Now I've had people say, uh, "Why can't why, we? We need to have communion more often." So what do Baptists do that we shouldn't do? Is we refrain them from what? Because of Roman Catholicism. We, ref we, we, we refrain from certain things that we should refrain from. One is communion. Because then you get the, the moment we got saved and we were in that, that, uh, that Mennonite church, I approached the pastor about it. You know, because of the, the feelings and the horror feelings of the transubstantiation, is they Baptists tend to refrain from communion, and what's the other thing they refrain from? <coughs> they don't preach on a certain person. Mary, they refrain from that. You don't. When was the last time you heard a sermon on Mary? <coughs> well, I purposely preach on Mary. I'll preach on her. We then preach on communion and, and do that to, to remove, to, to say, hey, listen, there's no reason we shouldn't preach on Mary. Man, but they refrain from doing that. And especially in this part of the country because it's all Roman Catholic. Everybody that came in off the boat from England, you know, all from Europe, Germany and France, all the Italians and the Frenchmen and the Irishmen, they're all Roman Catholic. And it's a cultural thing where they refrain from doing that. And so between here and Florida, they all then fly to Florida because that's the waiting, God's waiting room. <coughs> because they're getting ready to die down there. And in between, you got the Bible Belt. This is a cultural thing. But this is starting to get mixed up with corporations moving around. So the country is one big hodgepodge. It's not so much as it was. Or you don't, if, if you call, if you call down to Dayton, you're going to get a hillbilly accent. But that is, that's fading away. Anyway, back here to 1 Corinthians 11. And 
so we talk about when Jesus did the Last Supper, uh, I think it was uh, one of my pastors, I think it was the Mennonite pastor, the Mennonite, he said, well, no, when they did the Last Supper, Jesus didn't take off a finger and hand it to him and say, here, take, eat, this is my body. It's all a, it's, 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 uh, and he did miraculously make it his body. He didn't do that either. He didn't take a finger off or a hand off and say, eat that. This is my body. It was a piece of bread. And so Paul defines what it is. For I received of the Lord, verse 23, we're, we're going to do this today. He was, he, he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. It's a memorial service to remember him by. It has nothing to do with that bread becoming human flesh. All right? Again, verse 25, taking the cup, that cup as his blood, do in remembrance of me. Folks, hey, there's a place, I think it's in South America, they take a vial, they take a, a, a see-through glass. I've seen it, where they put the wine in there. And there. Then he does the hocus pocus dominocus, the priest does that, and then supposedly it changes color and turns into his blood. Anybody ever see that? No, they, they, they do that. Well, they put the wafer into a piece of glass. Well, they don't do, they don't do, no, I've only seen it with the wine. But they change that wafer, uh, that's supposedly, that's what he's doing. Now, what was your question? Let's get back to your question. It's a memorial service, folks, it's not, oh, and by the way, go to John 6 then. Go to the Gospel of John chapter 6. This isn't the lesson. And by the way, well, why are we go that? Well, I can't teach the whole Bible in one sitting. We're only here supposedly for an hour, and Sunday school's over. John chapter 6 is when he feeds the 5,000, he gets in a boat, he goes away. He sails away. They chase after him. <clears throat> and he said, you, you're not coming because of, you're not coming to me because of this. It's because you want the bread. So that's why you're following me. And they want to make him the bread king. This is, it, instead of going to the grocery store, they can go to him. So anyway, they couldn't understand what Jesus was talking about. And so taking the bread of life, John chapter 6 has nothing to do with the host and all of that. By the way, where is God to like, a Roman Catholic? I'm talking about a true blue Roman Catholic. Not one that was born and raised Catholic and knows nothing about what or why they're doing it. Most, most people in the world, they don't know why they're doing it. They're just doing it. I mean, it's just it's the family tradition. Where is God to them? To the true blue in the tabernacle. Where's the tabernacle? On top of the altar in the it's, church. It's, it, it's at the altar. If it's not there, it's behind them on a thing there. It's in the altar. That's where it is. That's where they keep the host. I've been in the back. I know what goes on there. The priests have given me tours. They show me what happens to the wine. They show me what happens. It, it goes down in a special place. By the way, when you take that, where does it end up? It ends up with the septic tank. Uh, the whole thing is just nuts. No. Let me show you what that is. Look at verse 47. We're talking about this bread of life. They don't know what he's talking about. The it is the Pharisees. They don't know what he's talking about. Well, look at verse 47. To try to get this just into a nutshell. He said, verily, verily, meaning truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. I am that bread of life. It means if you believe Jesus died on that cross for you, for your sins, that he was buried, and to prove God accepted the offering, he rose from the dead. 
All right, there, it's the end of uh, Ephesians. Uh, it, it shows that it's proof positive that God accepted that, that he was made alive again and came out of that grave. If you believe that, you have everlasting life. It has nothing to do with taking that host. It's like saying, I've got to be baptized to be saved. You know, they, they do this, you know, the baby's dying, better get it baptized before it dies. So all that is is witchcraft, folks. None of that is, none of that. Uh, only a believer, somebody who is a believer can be baptized. And babies can't believe. And they, we, well, we believe on the baby's behalf. All that is is man-made stuff. We have lists. We don't have it out here now. It's in the file cabinet where we have lists of what these people believe. We've even got people. We've had people that uh, now I disciple them. They say, "Why would we want?" I I feel the desire. We have to have communion. Or it's usually it's a woman. She was hooked on um, uh, Joyce Myers. We went over that. I went over that in detail. Over and over and over on Joyce Myers and to, to give that up. She, they're not partnered. I should say they, not partnered with it. They're going to continue that till the day they die. I don't need that here. I don't need that here. We don't need that influencer. Goodbye. And, and then, and then we had people. They're they're hunting for girls. They're hunting for women. It's just we don't need that. Here. And so we, uh, and if it goes and you say, well, why did they leave or why did this happen? Uh, folks, I don't have to disclose all that. That's their private business and I don't make it public. Bye-bye. We don't need to have, we don't need predators in the building. <coughs> we don't need predators. And when, when I get 30 complaints about it, 30 complaints, literally 30 people, good night. We don't need that here. All right, so uh, anyway, it, believing is the same thing as, as this what receiving this bread of life, Jesus Christ, is believing. Only believe, part five. Only believe. That's what it is. Now let's get back to your question one more time. Did I help you with your question or no? We lost what the question was. What the question is. I had asked my He uh, feels unworthy to take the communion the more he oh, realizes. Yeah. yeah, let's get back to First Corinthians 11. It's judging yourself, right? Yeah, it's judging yourself. First Corinthians 11, go there. We're already over your time here. We didn't get to Psalms. That's all right. It says in verse 28. It's in verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Now, now, I'll tell you what the unworthily means to some. For some groups, it means that they're not saved. That it's a lost person doing it. And then... Uh, Others, if, if they haven't examined themselves and they harbor sin, it, it, it's wide open. What does it mean? If you have unforgiveness in your heart, then you're blocking the forgiveness from God to you. Well, what was it right in the book of 28? One man examined himself. He has to examine. If you don't examine himself, you examine yourself around where they yeah. Well, some will say, well, examine yourself. Some will say that means salvation. The guy that, uh, the fella that, um, oh, he, he, he was the end of the world. Uh, thank you for calling and sharing. Was that? 
he would say it means salvation. And I'll tell you, you know who always called in and challenged him? What group of people? No? Baptists. Which is right. Baptists always called in. Thank you for calling Sharon. It was always a Baptist that called in. Because they're the ones that end up, end up knowing the Bible. Oh, one, one, one preacher, this was the uh, community one, uh, I had a pet, my pastor went and visited, he said, well, we don't talk about doctrine here because that, that, that just gets everybody upset. What's the very first thing you're supposed to talk about? <laughs> According to the verse, in Timothy, is doctrine. It's profitable for doctrine. And they avoid that like the plague. Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So death is, is the same thing as sleep. We preach you need to examine yourselves whether or not you're harboring <coughs> sin, and you, you, you need to ask forgiveness, and you need to get right with your brother. You just need to get right. And we don't, we don't hang on that in preaching. You ought to know that. I mean, after after 30 years of preaching, you need, you ought to know. You ought to know. Anyway. Off their preconceived notions or what they've been taught falsely. Oh my goodness! It's just. Uh, I think I think the bottom line, when it comes to sacramental religion, it's a form of mind control. Keep people in. Uh, oh, by in, the way. In uh, to keep people in bondage. We uh, uh we it keeps people in bondage and uh, trust me. In Baptist churches, they do that. It is mind control and keeping people in line. Keeping people they don't like, they don't like people that are not in line. All I say to this is, thus say the Lord. What does that book say? What does the book say? As far as all that lockstep stuff. I think a lot of people like it because they just want to have something to check the box. They check the box. Yeah. What did our friends say when we said we're going to go to a Baptist church? What was it? Knee jerk out of his mouth. Knee jerk because he grew up that way. You're, oh, he said, oh, he laughed. He said, oh, you're going to feel real guilty when you leave the We don't want anybody feeling guilty when they leave the We want people to feel forgiven when they leave the Not guilty. Forgiven. Not all Baptist churches are the same. It depends on the pastor. And like I said, the extreme is this. When the pastor's asking for your W-2, you need to find another. You need to find another church. Do pastors ask to see your W-2? You better believe they do. You hide them because they have a fifth grade education and, and you sit on the ground. Anyway, we're way over the time. Preach and then uh, let's go. I hope I answer that. It, it, I, I put that up like there, there shouldn't be a fog. If, if there's a fog in the pulpit, there's a mist in the auditorium. Do we have these expressions that we use? Is a lot of stuff needs to be cleared up. Anyway, uh, communion. The host, it, 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 the, the bread of life, is believing in Jesus. So that dispels, that dispels the. Oh, by the way, what are they sacrificing there on that altar? Anybody know? You nailed them down. They're sacrificing Christ up there. What priest slide me said no, they're sacrificing themselves. They're sacrificing Jesus up there, and the devil is loving every moment of it. Jesus died only once for us. Never, never die again. All right. See what happens when you ask a question that I can't answer. 
preaching in 15 minutes. Preaching in 15 minutes.